Hello, Cars and Crafters. Welcome to a new episode of Cars and Crafts and to a new year. Today is January 1st, 2021. Um, I'm excited for the new year. Um, the old year, 2020, wasn't the greatest for most people. Um, I still enjoyed it, even though I had to wear a mask at work. Um, I feel like I got a lot done, a lot accomplished, um, and we had a lot of fun as a family. Um, so I was thinking to myself as I'm getting ready to film this video, um, what fun activities could we do with fire? I have a torch. What kind of sparks can we make with a torch and, and metal shavings? So let's give it a try. Okay, so this is just steel shavings. You can see it's sparkling. If I drop it closer to the base of the flame. Okay, we'll see what that does. Nice orange flame. Wax and grease remover. I'm gonna be really careful with this. It's kind of blue. The mist enters the flame afterwards. I like that, that's cool. Well, that was fun. Um, if there's anything else you want me to burn, let me know in the comments. Um, something tells me they use steel shavings in fireworks because you get that same uh, sparkling effect with, I don't know, sparklers or those fountain fireworks. On with the show. So this is our newest uh, acquisition, Kawasaki Prairie 400. This is a 99 4x4 and uh, so far it's my favorite even though it has a solid rear axle. I love it. The steering is really easy. It's not power steering, but it's really easy to steer. Tires are grippy. They absorb a lot of the bounces and stuff, so I just, I love it. It's, it's old, but it does the job. Now this one we've had for a little bit longer. It has independent rear suspension. Um, it seems a little less torquey, a little less power, same size of engines, 400. Um, I'm happy with the reliability of Can-Am Bombardier. This one's a 2003, so it was before they called themselves Can-Am, I guess. Great little ATV. Super reliable, better on gas, as far as I can tell. It was being ridden by someone who was pushing on the gas hard. Um, so it wasn't a really fair comparison, but I think this one's easier on the gas than that one. Just because this one's so powerful and torquey. So do I recommend the Kawasaki Prairie 400? Absolutely, yes. Um, so far we've loved it. We've only had it for a few months and we've had a blast. Can't wait to take it camping. Can you hear that? I got the van going. I'm trying to air it out in here. It smells like camping stove fuel. 
that uh, wax and grease remover I was burning made it stink in here. Anyways, it'll clear out pretty soon, I'm sure. So let's get started on this Kawasaki. Let's start where we should always start and pick up the seat and disconnect the battery. Now on these, there's a cable and mine was actually disconnected when I bought it. So I had to reach up in there and reconnect it. But you just pull on the cable, push it down a little bit if it's stuck. There you go. 10 millimeter, just disconnect the negative terminal. And tuck it away so it doesn't reconnect. Let's get this cover off the gas tank. A Phillips screwdriver. Disconnect the hose, tuck it away, gas cap off, two 10 millimeter bolts right here. Don't forget to put the gas cap back on so you don't spill gas everywhere. Make sure the pet cock is pointing to the arrow in the off position. This side says off. Remove this petcock uh, dial. The Phillips again. The screw is all the way down inside there. Reach inside there with some Needle nose pliers and release the clamp from the hose. So that leads from the petcock straight to the carburetor. The gas tank now just slides back and up. Careful. There's a wiring harness that runs here. That's it, that's why you can't pull it straight up. And then the carburetor it butts into as you're pulling it back. So just be mindful of those two things, and it should be good. There it is. So there is the carburetor. It's in between the head, the intake. Portion. Here's the intake, and here is the air box tube. You can see it. Air is filtered here. Sucks in, goes through the carburetor, mixes with fuel, and then goes into the engine through the head. So next step is to disconnect everything that's connected to the carburetor. We'll start with the throttle. Phillips screw to get this cap off. Don't drop the washer down inside here. Ten millimeter nut. Just back it off on the top here. Slips right out. And then this Pull this up and then slide the barrel out. Get this around the back side and push out the barrel. There it is. So that was your thumb throttle. You can see it moving as I'm pushing the thumb throttle there. This is your idle setting. It leads to the other side and it's just clipped in, just pull on it and lift it through that there and it's loose. Now we can concentrate on the choke cable and 
the overflow tube. And that just comes right off. This is a plastic hex right here. 12. Loosen it up the rest of the way, and then it slides right out. There's two tubes attached to the bottom and a T, and it comes to T right there. We need to get that off. I'm hoping it'll just slip right off. Looks like we're going to have to remove both tubes, one on each side. That is a coolant hose that runs to the bottom of the carburetor. Let's get the carburetor free and then that hose will be easy to get. And the drain for when you want to winterize, drain out the carburetor, this hose, this snake snakes around all the way down to the bottom of the ATV. So I'll just take that off. Boom, done. While we're here, let's take a look at some other things you can service while you have this gas tank off. So I'm seeing timing chain tensioner, starter, a couple of bolts there, coil, right there, air cleaner. We'll probably clean the air cleaner out while we're here too. This is your starter solenoid. That's the thing that goes click when you try and start. And if that's all you hear is a click, then something wrong with your starter. If you don't hear that click, something wrong with your solenoid. This is your ignition computer. Battery, fuses, this coolant, oil, 3.4 liters. I was going to get started on this right away, but I realized that this pump was leaking. This is the priming pump. And on some bikes and ATVs, uh, this is taken over by a vacuum from the engine. It allows when the engine is turning over it sucks a vacuum and allows the fuel to go into the carburetor this model doesn't have that instead when it needs to be primed when you've just rebuilt the carburetor and you're putting things back together and there's no gas in the bowl you pump this to get gas in the bowl like that but I did not notice that this was leaking, so I, I believe this is the reason we're getting gas coming out. Not necessarily the needle, but since we've got it here and I've got a rebuild kit, we'll just go ahead and rebuild it. So first, you want to get all the things off that will have a bad reaction to the cleaner. 
So there is a diaphragm inside here that will need to come out. And there's a diaphragm inside the pump here also. Let's start with the pump. I believe the diaphragm inside the pump here should be impervious to gasoline. Got a spring inside there. <clears throat> but we'll take it off just in case. As you can see, that diaphragm is all torn up. So I'm glad I'm replacing this. And that's what the new one looks like. If you've got a new needle that comes in your carburetor rebuild kit, just replace it. If not, you can just wipe this needle down with carburetor cleaner on a rag. If this diaphragm is moist like mine, just wipe it off with a dry towel. Don't spray carburetor cleaner on this. It will deform it. If it doesn't destroy it, it'll take a long time to reform back to the way it was. So it's easier just to make sure there's no tears or anything in it. Wipe it off, get the dirt off. And then we'll put it back in when it's time to put everything back together. This is what holds the needle in place inside the diaphragm area. Put the needle in first. And then this part goes in next. And we'll set that aside. It's ready to put back in. We're ready to take the bowl off now. We'll start with this coolant line. When your carburetor's been sitting for a long time with ethanol gas in it, the jets are what clog up. And then when you go to try and start the engine, no gas can get in there and get mixed with air and go into the engine. So you get no combustion because there's no hydrocarbons to combust. So let's start by getting the float off. Just push this bar through. Use a little pick if you got one. Pull it all the way, the rest of the way through. Set it aside. And then the float just lifts straight out. It's got the valve attached to it still. Take off the old valve. Slide it in there and then slide it on. Like that. Find yourself a eight millimeter wrench. Loosen it up. 
and get the jet loose. Alright, so the jet's loose off of the larger brass piece here. Don't throw this away. This is not replaced in the carburetor rebuild kit, but this part is. Keep a note of the size of this jet. You don't want to replace it with the wrong one. This one says 135. Make sure all the holes are cleaned out. I can see light through these holes. So I'm just going to spray it out. If yours are all clogged up, let it sit in fresh gasoline overnight and then use a toothbrush to clean out those holes. Down inside there is a little barrel that can be replaced too. So hold your finger over the hole here. I just got it loose by pushing on it through this side. This only goes in one way. And you can tell the longer side is not as shiny. So I think that went into the hole. So put it in first. But you'll be replacing this with a new one. So we'll test that out. So I put it in the right way. The longer end going in first. You can watch it rise up as I screw this back in. See it? Right there. That's what it's supposed to look like. So once you've tightened that down, it tends to like to stay in place. See? Now it doesn't want to move. It's a bigger hole than both of these and it was running rather well with this one so I'm going to just put this one back in if you bought your ATV and it's not running it's not idling well with clean jets and everything there's a chance you may need to change out the jets to a smaller jet if you live in the mountains like I do so up here there's less oxygen which means you'd need less gas. So if you have more oxygen at a lower elevation, you'll want a bigger jet. Since it was running well with the big jet, I'm going to stick with the big jet, this one right here. Go ahead and spray it out and tighten it back up. We'll get the next jet off. This one is just a screw, flathead. This one says 85 on it. It looks nice and clean. And it also looks the same size as these ones. It's the same, same size as the ones that came in the kit. Same size hole inside there. So for some reason these ones didn't come labeled with the size. So I'm assuming they're an 85, just like this one. I'll go ahead and replace it with the new one. Now for this next one, you'll need a nice skinny screwdriver. Make sure you're catching on. There it goes. It's engaged, so push and turn. So that's what that one looks like. And it's the same size as the one that came in the kit. So we'll just replace that. What you want to do on the mixture screw is turn it down to the right all the way, but count as you go. So you want to see how many turns it takes to get all the way down so that you can replace it with the new one and turn it out to the same amount of turns so you get the same mixture rate so you don't run too rich or too lean
one half one one and a half basically two so tighten that all in it's two it's where you want it so when you put the new one in you'll tighten it down all the way not too tight because there's a little o-ring in there one half one one and a half two and you'll just leave it there Take your pick and get that spring out of there. So mine didn't have the o-ring or washer inside of there. We'll take this gasket off and everything will be ready to clean. just spray out all the little holes and crevices blow out your jet holes here mixture screw hole spray everything down real good scrub it real good and then blow everything off and then repeat as necessary to get everything nice and clean So it turns out there was a washer and an o-ring inside where the mixture screw goes. It's these guys here. That and that. Put the o-ring in first and the washer on top. and then the new mixture screw so I've got it all the way down, not too tight I'll do two full turns one half one one and a half two Remember to put your brass barrel in there first. Put the long end in first. Make your pick. There you go. Just make sure it's a little snug in there so it stays, doesn't fall. And we can put the big jet back in and tighten it down with the 8 millimeter wrench. Remember just everything's just snug not over tight. Just, just like that. Good. Put the other jet in. Snug. And the last jet in that goes all the way down inside there. Just drop it in, get your skinny screwdriver, tighten that down in until it's snug. So just make sure the float valve slides into the inlet as you place the float back in. Grab the pin that goes through the float. Get it through the hole and line up the float 
as it goes through. And there it goes. Now we can put the bowl back on. First we need to make sure we got the new gasket on. And we'll put the carburetor on top of it so that the gasket doesn't fall out. So the gasket seats properly, you want to screw these down um, gently at first and then do another round, tightening, tightening them down all the way. So now I can start tightening them down the rest of the way. You just want that gasket to sit in there nice and even all the way around. Now we can put the new priming pump on and you can see how it's there's only one way to put this on so it's going to go like this. Test it out. Oh yeah, that feels feels great compared to the old one. Nice and smooth with motion. Good to go. Now we can put the diaphragm back on. Invert your diaphragm so that it'll line up. Stick your finger in it like this. Line it up with the fins like that. Stick it in. Make sure the needle lines up too. It goes in that hole. Just like that. And then you can put the spring back in the hole and put your cap back on. Line up the spring with the fins on the top there. You want all these to tighten down at the same rate. So you have a nice even seal. Now before you put the carburetor back in, make sure to install this little bracket that you took off and put the screw back in. I'm going to loosen up the tube on the air box so that I can more easily install the coolant lines on the bottom of the carburetor. Start with one side, and start with the left side. Push it in, grab the clamp, and Squeeze it and scoot it on. And same thing to the other side. That one slipped, slipped on a lot easier. Now, you can go ahead and install it. Now let's reattach the throttle. Pull this up. Stick that in. Wrap it around like that. There it goes. 
and just like that. That slides in there like that. And then we tighten this up until we get no play in there. Not no play, I guess, but very little play. Want that to go all the way back down. Tighten that up. Test it one more time. Put that lid back on now. Clip the bottom onto this knob here at the bottom first. And then it slips over the top. Now well, I think we're ready for the gas tank. While we're here, we'll take out this air cleaner. Take off the top part first, holds it in place, and then that part. There we go. And this just comes off. Give this a good clean and reinstall it. I think we'll hook up the gas tank and give the engine a try. Test out my new priming, priming pump. Oh, I feel pressure now. Let's put the air filter back in and try and start her up. Choke on, neutral. Now we can put all the rest of it back on. She's ready to roll. Just gotta clean all this stuff off and drive her away. And that's how you rebuild a carburetor. Hey, if you guys know anybody with a four-wheel drive ATV, uh, an older one that needs some work, I'm looking for a project for my next video. Um, I've got some cool ideas on how to make it do some fun stuff, so look forward to that. Just remember to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I'll keep coming up with these fun videos and even funner videos in the future. As always, stay crafty.